Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II World at War. It is September of 1941, we're getting close to war with America, we're driving deep into the heartland of Russia in an effort to knock the Soviet Union out of the war before the Americans can arrive. We're making a fair bit of progress and we're at the doorstep of Smolensk, but it is late in 1941 and the season is about to change, which will be somewhat challenging to say the least. We have a lot of infantry on the front all over here. We don't have a lot of mechanized troops. The majority of our armor and mechanized troops are here, uh, just west of Smolensk uh, for the drive on Moscow, uh, whereas we have one armor unit in the south and one armor unit in the north. So really the impetus of our assault here is on Moscow. This turn, I think what my real focus is going to be is trying to get to this rail line in Smolensk. Uh, so essentially what we're going to try and do this turn is take the city of Gormel, take the city of Smolensk, maybe take the city of Brinsk, uh, and then uh, we can consolidate in the winter along this rail line here, hopefully taking Kiev and Kotentop and kind of maintaining this rail line here for supply, which will allow us to have a good staging point for a drive on Moscow in 1942. I don't envision driving too far north on Leningrad. It would be nice to take Riga. I think that would be a, a good thing to deny the Soviets. I think it has 20 MPPs or at least 10 MPPs worth of economic production. And in addition to that, um, it'll kind of help unbuckle this line here. They've built a bit of a, of a single main line of resistance here in the north, and I don't want to spend too much effort driving north there. We are going to need to start upgrading our infantry firepower as well, um, so we'll need to kind of pause at some point for that too. But that's the situation in Russia. Uh, in... North Africa, things are going, I guess, reasonably well. We just destroyed a British armored unit and a British Spitfire here to the south of the Katara Depression. Um, they had no supply. I'm going to see if it's worth taking a risk of shooting any Italian armor across the desert here to maybe attack the British uh, tactical and strategic bombers that are sitting here uh, in the rear. There's no supply here. That's the problem. But we should get at least one or two turns worth of uh, combat, and that would be more than enough most likely to destroy either of these units here uh, and do the British a bit of damage. Uh, we did destroy a few British naval units last turn as well. A British battleship was destroyed off the coast of Brest, as well as a British destroyer. And we're trying to get these submarines of ours out into the shipping lanes here to start interdicting British economic output again. Meanwhile, on the Chinese theater, things are kind of what they are. Japan is preparing for war with the United States, and in fact, I think what I'm going to do uh, we don't really have any any money to do that. So next turn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these guys in amphibious transports and start working on getting them to the bases they need to be at. We need to be able to take Guam. We need to be able to take the Dutch East Indies. Uh, we need to be able to take Singapore. I'm working on getting Thailand to join our alliance, which would also be helpful. Uh, more territory, more resources, more economy to draw from. Meanwhile, on the Chinese front itself, uh, we're kind of running into bottlenecks due to supply and lack of mobility up here in the north. In the south, we started kind of grinding the Chinese down and driving on Chongqing. Uh, and in the, the further south, again, terrain and weather are getting in our way. But that's the situation on September 26, 1941. And we are now ready to go ahead and uh, give the AI its turn because all of our units have moved. U.S. oil embargo still continues to hurt Japanese morale, which is, again, a reason that we're going to need to go to war with them. Greek partisans are disrupting supply in Athens and uh, our dockyards there. We're hindering Allied supply on Crete. Diplomatic success in Thailand. 15% swings toward the Allies, or the Axis, sorry. And uh, there you go. Uh, I do think that the if we keep, keep up on Thailand, we may get to see them swing another 15%. They'll probably be at war with the Allies in three turns. So, it'll be close to December 7th, 1941, I think. I need to check and see what the actual American mobilization is. I think they were around 60-something percent for the Allies. So, the higher that gets, the more ready they are for war. So, that's just something else that we're going to have to manage. Meanwhile, it looks like this Soviet armor is falling back from Kiev. It would be interesting if we could surround and take Kiev next turn. The Soviets are throwing huge numbers of troops here in front of Smolensk, which will be... I don't know if we're going to take Smolensk now if they have three armies in front of it. We'll see. The snow shouldn't start falling till next month, though, so at least that'll be a positive. Also, it looks like the rain has stopped in central China, so our air forces should be able to get into, into action there this turn. We have a considerable concentration of air units here. Um, 
British destroyers going after our subs. Wow. That is a lot of freaking sub destroyers that are chasing down that sub. Alright, strategic bombing. They have no fighter escort, by the way. But apparently our fighters are grounded because they're in a sandstorm. God damn it! <sighs> okay. Nice. Nice defensive there by the uh, German Corps there. It took two casualties, but it inflicted two on an army. And a Soviet counterattack near Dipronersk, however you pronounce that, did not go well for them. Soviets are attacking near Smolensk. Losing some casualties there. This army can't do anything against these Chinese that are attacking him there. What the hell? I think we're going to go for Yi Chang next turn. If we can take Yi Chang, that may help us um, get some supply for it as well. Okay. Um, more British submarines moving around. Nice. All right. We just damaged a Canadian destroyer there with a sub of our own. Soviets reinforcing some of their troops. U.S. oil embargoes hitting Japanese morale again. The arrival of the Flying Tigers boosts Chinese morale. I thought we had already destroyed a Flying Tigers unit. Axis Raiders disrupting UK convoys to Canada. I don't know how much damage they actually did. But this should, hopefully, with the destruction of so many British surface vessels, my hope is maybe uh, this will lead to a happy time for the submarines. UK loses 13 MPP. Some intelligence reports. I don't really care about what's in Cape Town. All right, so there you have it. Let's see here. All right, so we'll get these subs on that southern leg of the uh, British economy. These guys will move north. The sub will swing a little bit further out to hopefully get away from British surface patrols. Um, we've got a lot of enemy destroyers around here. I'd like to try and take a shot at one of them. The more British destroyers we can hurt, the better. These guys... Let's see what we can... Hmm. Alright... God damn it. That's a lot of freaking destroyers around there. Damn, I didn't want to take four losses for that. Alright, this guy can end up there. Well, we destroyed it. Dest Good God, that was a lot of punishment to take. All right, we'll move this guy to the south. I want to get as many of these battleships back into port as possible. These guys will move over here, and these guys will move to the south of the Bay of Biscay. All right. So, and these guys will move to St. Nazare because they need to repair themselves. So there's four British destroyers here. We're going to set these guys to hunt mode and send them up here. So we're going to have two subs or three subs on these two northern convoys, two subs on the southern convoy, and then some other vessels are resting and repairing. All right. We also have this battleship in the channel. Um, we're going to slowly move what I think is the turpits down the channel here at full strength. We're going to reinforce the subunit and move it back to C next turn. So that'll do the naval action in the Atlantic. Um, goddamn sandstorms. 
And these guys can't quite get there. What's the supply look like? No supply over here. No supply at all. Alright, that sucks. Um, try and bombard these guys, maybe. Put this back. I don't really want to swing wide if that's going to be the experience here. Reinforce these guys. I really don't think I can afford to attack these guys until I've got better um, supply. Or at least till these sandstorms go away. Reinforce these. Curious about these anti-tank guns. I'm guessing they won't be very good against enemy infantry. Okay. Guess that's probably about the best we can do with these guys. All right, um, that's the situation in the Middle East. I haven't touched Russia yet. What about the Chinese theater? Is it raining here still? God damn it, I thought it wasn't. It looked like it wasn't two weeks ago, and now it's raining again. It's not in the north. Let's see if we can take Yi Chang. Alright, well, we at least destroyed the Chinese units in Yichang. Even if we couldn't take the city. So, another Chinese army down. As much damage as I can do to the Chinese is, is good, I think. Damn. Alright, so, meanwhile, we're going to start putting some of these guys on boats. So, I don't know if we want to do long range. These guys need to do the Philippines, so I think these can be short range amphibious transports. Alright, these guys... All right, so these three units, I think, are going to try and conquer the Philippines. These units, I don't know. I guess it depends on what we do with Bangkok. I'm going to move this armor. It's going to take too long to get into position, isn't it? Uh, um... What do we do? Alright, these guys are definitely going to be long range transport. Saipan, I think, is going to go for Guam. We'll have one of these guys go for Wake Island. So these guys are going to go for Wake. One of... One of these guys is going to go for Guam, I think. Someone should go for Rabaul, too. One of these guys would go for the southern edge of the Philippines. So I don't have enough money to do anything with them right now. So I guess that makes my decision for me. Meanwhile, reinforcements I have no money for. I have no aircraft that can attack, which kind of sucks. Hurt these guys? No. What about these? Damn the artillery. It's just too freaking 
resilient. There's this line that I can't penetrate. All right, we're going to move the armor back. I think we're going to try and get it uh, into the offensive against the allies. All right, so we did sort of overrun the enemy troops in Yichang, but we weren't able to take the city. Come on. Well, at least I'm getting free experience on these troops that aren't actually... doing any damage, I guess. Uh, okay. Alright, well, I guess that's kind of the situation here in Asia. Now to the Russian front! Where mud and rain are always the, the rage. Alright, so here in the south, these aircraft are going to be able to attack. They're also going to be able to attack in the north. I should probably... Oh, I can't fly that way. Apparently. So these guys are entrenched at what? Only one entrenchment level. That's good. I don't know if attacking them with infantry reduces their entrenchment level. It does not. Okay, good to know. Um... All right. Slowly trying to work on these guys. Their entrenchment level is zero now. They were attacked a bunch of times, so they'll have to regain that entrenchment level. I also am hoping their supply drops a bit or they, I don't know, something. All right, so these guys, let's work on these. All right, I'm going to try and get around Riga. And then I'm going to try and reduce it. There we go. Riga is German. Just like that. All right. So... We will try and get around the or around the Russian flank here. Unbuckle this whole line, maybe. Hmm. Very nice. Shift our line. Ooh. This is tempting. The problem is it draws me away from Moscow, but if I can wipe out these units here by encircling them, that would be pretty awesome, I think. The question is, can I do it? The other problem is, like, I probably should keep my momentum on, on Moscow and not worry about encircling these guys. Um, let's see here. What's the, the entrenchment level of these guys is 3, 0, and 0. Okay, so Smolensk is going to be bombed. We'll get some interceptors, but we should have some escorts as well. We do. All right, so I'm going to keep the focus on Smolensk. I think that is the key to the position. So we're going to use our strategic bombers, the ones who can reach anyway, um, to remove the entrenchments of some of these guys. More interceptors. All right. These guys can reach Smolensk. So their entrenchment is down to one. It's probably about as far as I can get it to drop. Um, can these guys reach over here? No. So they're gonna fo- Jesus Christ, an interceptor's galore. Good thing I've got a lot of fighter escorts. Um, 
Arstukas. Do we want to focus on Kiev? They are entrenched level 3. Let's do this. I don't know if Stukas reduce the entrenchment or not. They do not. Okay, so only the strategic bombers reduce your entrenchments. Good to know. Let's see, these guys can move out here. Ah, oh, fuck, I wanted them to attack the frickin' Russian... Ah! Uh, Alright, well, there's a line there. Kiev is surrounded. Alright, so we've got these two enemy units surrounded. And, of course, our minor allies aren't going to actually do their job. Uh... Very frustrating that it took that many units to overcome that single Russian unit that was surrounded. Alright, what's the supply situation look like there? They don't even have a port here, do they? So how are they going to draw some... I guess they are in a city, so they'll be able to draw some supply. Um, Kiev is surrounded. Let's see... I'd like to, like, strafe these guys into oblivion. The air attacks don't seem to be going my way. These guys are a level one fighter unit, I guess. I think they're doing more damage than we're doing to them. And we can't quite reach them to finish them off. Lovely. Did I use the Stuka already? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, I'm just too haphazard right now, jumping all over the map. What am I trying to do? Uh, these guys will attack first. Hmm, I think these guys already attacked. They did. There's just no way we're going to be able to do this. We've got to bring up our mech. Alright, well there you go. Kiev has fallen. So it only took, like, the whole frickin' southern army. These guys need reinforcements. These guys can't reinforce because they attacked. Alright, so we just cut off this city. Reinforce these troops in the south. We'll bring these... Headquarters units forward. Fuck. God damn the Soviet troops over here. Alright, let's reinforce these guys. I'm going to need to start upgrading my troops too. So it looks like the Soviets are slowly upgrading their own troops. Meanwhile, we've taken Kiev. We've advanced a little bit. I don't think we're going to get Gormel. Um, can we flank this way? Let's try and get around. Very nice. I'd rather attack Smolensk, but I don't think...
Damn it. Ugh. I was trying to go too far too fast. I was hoping I could encircle this whole Russian pocket here, but it looks like the uh, Soviets put some troops in my way. Um, there's also two towns there, so it's not really quite that straightforward. All right, we're going to focus on Smolensk then. Okay, can anybody else get there? No. All right, so we're going to have to use our armor over here. Damn it. We couldn't quite get there. We couldn't quite take the city. Now they're going to swap it out with fresh forces. Potentially these guys to the south, which are even better troops. Unless... I'm just going to pretend I'm threatening Moscow from this direction, hoping they'll swing their reinforcements over here. Alright. We need to force march these guys to the front. Alright. Alright, we're trying to get in around this massive pocket of Soviet soldiers to the north. I don't think we have anywhere near enough troops to do it. But I am going to just kind of saddle these troops over here. I think we're going to bomb the hell out of Gormel next turn. The objective really is not to advance on Moscow yet. I'm really just trying to get the Soviets to respond to this pocket here. And then I'm going to swing south. I almost crushed... Uh, Kiev this turn. Not quite. We weren't able to finish it off, unfortunately. Um, keep moving our uh, air units forward. And then, frankly, in the south, I, I just want to, I want to get my, my air units toward where I need them. Some of these guys may hang back a little bit just because I need to try and resupply them. <sighs> Krakow in the south. All right. Well, we're in some trouble here, I think. I guess my objectives before the winter, as I've already said, take Smolensk, see if we can take Brinsk, Gormal. And then maybe if there's an opportunity to destroy these guys, I know this is kind of falling into the trap of the Germans in World War II where they got fixated on destroying Soviet units and pockets, but if I could destroy all these guys, boy, that would go a long way to weakening them, I think. It's got to be more than their, their total income. Um, do any of these guys... I, I, don't, I think everybody's kind of moved, so I don't really have much that can upgrade. If any... Um, so I think since we don't have any money for upgrades this turn, or we don't have any units that can take them, maybe we'll spend some on research. Actually, real quick, let's take a look at the diplomacy tray. USA is 70% mobilized now, so we'll see. Thailand is up to 69% swung toward the Axis. They're freaking expensive. It's kind of annoying to get these. I'm spending way more money probably than it's worth to bring them into the war on our side. Um, Italy does have a little bit of money. Probably reinforce some of these guys. What's the partisan situation in Greece look like? I want to get back to Athens. I don't want to leave Athens ungarrisoned but I also don't want to just... But I can't operate anyone to where they need to be. 
There's also Russian partisans we're going to have to start worrying about. Now, most of these guys are so close to the front, we probably don't need to worry about it yet because a lot of those hexes are occupied by our armies, but something to keep in mind. Um... Alright, so we've got garrisons everywhere. There might be French resistance as well. Okay. Uh, we can upgrade the port, right? Actually, it might be worth upgrading this port to have some anti-aircraft guns. Well, they have some, but it's only going to cost 10. Likewise for Brest, as the Allied Air Forces get stronger. I would assume Brest can be upgraded. Well, the city. What about the port? Maybe we can't. At least upgrade these guys to the south. Okay. We may have already upgraded this port. Alright. So, a good deal of commerce raiders are out at sea. The British still have a lot of destroyers here for us to deal with. But, we destroyed another one. Let's actually take a look before we head off this episode at the losses. Um, no, actually, let's not do that. I don't want to look at the numbers. I want to look at the income. So if we go to the British, take a look at the graphs. We go to the British and we see um, convoys. They're generating a lot more. They barely lost anything from raiding. Hopefully that changes. They've generated 3,700 income from convoys, which is concerning. That's a lot of freaking money. Strategic bombing, they haven't lost anything from. They've spent 3100 on research, which is a lot. If we compare that to Germany, Germany spent 1700 so the Allies are certainly going to get ahead of us in research. That means the long war is problematic for us. Plunder, they haven't done much because they haven't taken over any countries. Overall, MPPs, they've collected 8591 from income. They've spent over 5000 but they've lost over 11000 worth of income of units. Now... That doesn't seem to add up to me. That means they should be dramatically weaker than they started. Uh, and I don't quite get that sense. Now, I don't think that factors in free warships, like free destroyers that the U.S. are giving to them. Um, and I don't know if there's other elements of Lend-Lease in here or not. Additionally, I don't know if this total collected income includes the convoy income. If it does, if it doesn't, then they are down 3,000. If it does, then they're, you know, down, they're about even. British national morale's at 85%. France, we already knocked out of the war. The U.S., good God, they've... I guess their economy hasn't fully kicked in yet because they've only generated 5,000 income. The Soviet Union, meanwhile, their losses have been tremendous. They've collected 5,000 income. Their losses have been 7,000. And they've only spent 2,700. So if that's to be believed... They also have generated about 596 MPPs from convoy activity. So what I'm actually going to do with this sub over here that's at Kiel is... Uh, this is a British sub. We're going to send them north into the Norwegian Sea here to try and intercept the uh, Soviet convoys as well. Um, it'd be great if we could take Murmansk. It's so far north. But if we could cut that, that source of income off for them, that would be great. Uh, I'd probably have to bring Sweden into the war on our side. Uh, meanwhile, Germany, if we look at the graphs, what's Germany doing? Convoys, not nearly as important. We've only gained about a, th a thousand income from them. Lost about 141. We've lost about 10,000 income worth of units, but we've also collected about that. So we're about even there. German national morale is high because we keep destroying enemy units. German plunder is also 1,300 because we've taken multiple countries. Spent 1,700 on research. Spent 1,000 on diplomacy. That's probably a, mis a mistake. Um, nine, about 120 lost to strategic bombing, and we have inflicted just shy of 800 income losses from subs and about 480 from, uh, from surface raiders. Or maybe that's what we've lost. I'm not sure because the British have nothing there, so I'm really not sure on that. Uh, Italy, MPPs, they've lost 4,100. They've collected 2,800. They're arguably weaker. I think that's largely based off naval losses. And Japan has gained 8,400 in income, spent 4,900, lost 4,300. Uh, research on Japan, they've spent about 1,600 on research. 
So, yeah. Anyway, that's the situation as of October 24th, 1941. We've probably got about one more turn that we can use to shore up the Russian front. And the objective next turn has to be to reduce this pocket uh, and kind of build a main line of resistance out here. Hopefully take Gormal uh, and then also Smolensk. And then uh, kind of firm up a defensive line somewhere around here for the Russian winter where we can start upgrading some troops. Additionally, if we do see an opportunity to encircle this massive pocket of Soviet troops, we'll do it. I just don't foresee it happening. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you're enjoying this series. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.